the first presentation uh, will be made by uh, Andreas Lampropoulos. Uh, it's entitled Frame Encasement, Shear Walls. Uh, Dr. Andreas Lampropoulos is a principal lecturer at the Civil Engineering Department of the University of Brighton in the UK. His main research agenda spans the areas of novel construction materials and seismic strengthening retrofitting of existing structures. So, Andreas, uh, whenever you're ready, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you, Eduardo, and Eduardo for the introduction and for the coordination. It is a pleasure for me to give the presentation today, those two presentations. The first one is now on the frame encasement or sear walls. Uh, this is a group work. Uh, you can see here the... the the main authors of this chapter, uh, Apostoliti, Dritzos, Yarlelis, Kyriakidis, Lambropoulos, Mosele, and Trepa Peace. And uh, I will start now with the presentation of the main topic. So uh, in case of frame encasement, or as we call seal walls, the target is to do this strengthening technique in order to enhance stiffness, strength, and tactility. So these are the three main reasons why we should use frame encasement or sear walls. When there is a lack of stiffness, lack of strength, lack of tactility, and we want to enhance those, we can use the sear wall method. Uh, we know that in case of buildings which uh, have been constructed without seismic codes or with old code provisions, it is quite common to have a lack of sufficient sear walls. So we need now to come and start working on how we should design and construct the sear walls. The, the chapter that you will see have detailed information about the design process and the construction and the quality assurance and so on, we will focus here due to the limited time on the main characteristics and the design process. So let's start with a very simple example. Uh, so we have the building that you can see here in this slide. And this is a building which has very low stiffness in the Y direction. You can see also that there is a ground floor garage and we need to have access to the street for the cars to go in and out. And uh, how, how we should work, just a simple example here is we can construct some sear walls in the Y direction. Now, we have classified the sear walls as two, two main types. The first one that you see here is the frame encasement with jackets. So in this case, we have the sear wall, but we also construct jackets around the existing columns. And what you see here in red is the new reinforcement of the jacket and the sear walls, which go around the initial columns that you see with uh, black. And in this case, this is a quite heavy intervention since we ensure that there is a quite good connection between the old and the new structure. And we can also significantly enhance strength, ductility, and stiffness. Another type of intervention is simple frame encasement, which is the construction mostly of a new wall but we do not do any extra work on the columns. So actually, we simply construct a new wall in, inside the frame without constructing any jackets around the columns. Uh, but in this case, we should also have dowels in order to take the shear forces at the interface. The first one, so the frame encasement with jackets is, as you probably understand, the recommended is the more heavy type of intervention. And 
the targeting of the columns plays here a quite crucial role for the strengthening. If we go to the process step by step, we can see here a typical photo of the real structure. We should start with the interventions on the existing columns and the beams. So actually, we need to do the preparation in the columns and the beams before the casting of the new wall and the jackets. And we need to add uh, anchors or mechanical connectors to the existing columns. And of course, we should also work on the roughening and cleaning of the surface of the old concrete. Then we should place the reinforcement around the existing columns and the new wall as following our design. And we place the formwork for the casting of concrete, or we can have the casting of the sheer wall with a formwork, and we can use probably salt grit, spent concrete for the column jackets. And of course, we should also work on the foundation, on the strengthening of the foundation and the connection between the old and the new elements. In case of a simple frame encasement, uh, we, we, this is a more type of light upgrading at lower ductility levels, is less intrusive and more practical. So in this case, we simply add the, the wall and in this case, the construction of a new foundation for the new wall is not necessarily required. May, may be needed, needs to be checked, but is, may not be required. So in this case, we have the frame only with the construction of the, the, the new wall. Now, starting with a simple frame encasement, we we have two methods, the traditional method with short towers and long starter bars. Uh, so in this case, we have the starter bars to you to anchor uh, the wall to, to, to work as anchors. And we also provide short dowels to enhance the shear resistance at the interface. An equivalent method is to use long dowels to, to take the shear forces. This is considered a simpler technique, more cost effective. And the effect that we have is has been proved to be quite similar to the traditional method. A third one can be considered to have the new wall only without any connection to the bounding frame. Of course, you can understand that this will lead to the significantly lower capacity uh, and is suggested only for the encasement of the upper floor openings where we have lower uh, seismic force demands. So in this third case, we have the sheer wall without any significant connection with the frame. Starting now with the design procedure, we need to do the diagonal compression check. So we consider that the forces in the frame uh, lead to a diagonal force, which can be calculated as you see in this slide. Uh, and we can also calculate the diagonal strut resistance. Uh, you can see all the symbols in this slide. So actually, the, the, the compressive diagonal force is the length L of uh, the diagonal length over the length of the wall times the shear force, while the diagonal strut resistance is dependent on the strength, on the thickness of the panel, and the effective width of the diagonal strut. And of course, we need to make sure that the diagonal force will not exist the resistance of the diagonal strut. 
Now, using these forces now, we should also calculate the shear forces and we should calculate the number of dowels which are required in order to take the shear force. So we have forces in the beam, so along the beam, which can be calculated from the internal forces, as you see here. Uh, so it's the F S, which is the shear force minus the one over the diagonal length times lambda n r, which is the residual resistance of the diagonal strut. And in this case, from this force, we can also calculate the vertical force, the one that you see the v F dowel is vert. So we have now the shear force along the beam the shear force along the length of its column and this now can be used in order to calculate the number of the dowels. So actually we have a number of dowels as N, B, N, C and the reduction factor alpha M, C which considers the fact that not all the towers are fully mobilized at the same time. And there is actually a reduction due to the cyclic loading too. This is the reduction factor, which can be simplified taking us half 0.5. And we also have FD max, which is actually the towers resistance, which can be calculated using the equations which are proposed by model code 2010. So we have the dowel resistance when we have only dowel action or when we have combined action of dowels and tankers. So knowing now the strength of the dowels, the maximum load the dowels can take, we can simply calculate the number of the required dowels, the beam and the columns, by dividing the force we are expecting over the strength of each dowel. And of course, we need to consider the reduction factor. Now, uh, we need also to consider which is the failure mode in this case. So we can have either a plastic hinge at the base of the wall, or we can have a uplift of the wall footing from the ground. And we need to calculate both, and we need to find which is the crucial one. So this is how we calculate the uh, maximum moment, which develops around the center of the footing before overturning. So we have, we assume two similar tie beams frames into the opposite phase of the footing. And this is how we can calculate the overturning, the moment before the overturning. Uh, we have all the symbols here. You can see in the slide, PF is the length of the footing. And dot is the total vertical force transferred to the ground. MRTB is the moment resistance of each tie beam. LTB is the clear length of tie beam between the footings. And we can calculate the overturning moment where HF is the vertical distance from the base of the wall to that of the footing and LSO is taking as the wall's shear span. So practically we, compare those two and uh, we take the most, uh, so, so we have the one for the overturning, we have the other one for the plastic heat, which is calculated from plane section analysis. This is the MRWO, we check which is the crucial one and we take the crucial one in order to calculate the uh, the shear forces, and in case we have the first one, 
we may also need to to take a slightly different equation for the shear force, uh, which is the one that you see here. Now, using these forces, uh, we can calculate the dowels along the length of the beam. So simply taking the equation on the top, and we can also calculate the dowels along the interface of the new web and each column. So we have the beam and the column dowels, which should have the same density. We calculate NB using the equation on the top, where we have the shear minus two VRDC, which is the design shear resistance of each one of the two bounding columns. We take into consideration the reduction factor as before. And for the column, we consider the same density of dowels and we calculate, as you see, using uh, H over L, so the height over the length of the panel times the number of dowels of the beams. So this is a brief overview of the design procedure. In the chapter, you will find detailed information uh, on, a, on the construction process, on quality assurance on any supporting documents required, but due to the limited time, I will not go more in detail in the additional aspects, and I have simply focused on some key points of the design process. Uh, we, we have also included a case study, so you will find the application of this uh, technique for, for a school in Kefalonia in Greece, uh, you can see a photo of the, of the school and uh, you can see also the layout of the ground floor. And in this, this specific structure, didn't have any significant damage due to the earthquake. Uh, however, it was decided that needs to be strengthened because of the importance since this, was an this is an educational facility and it was vacated, so it was not functionable. Therefore, uh, the strengthening of this building was decided. So uh, we, have, we have used the, the theory that, that was presented before for the design of the sear walls, and the same School building was also examined for the application of steel jackets, which is one of the following. Um, is one of the following uh, session will follow uh, on how we design steel jackets and has been applied for this school too. So starting with the sear wall, uh, it was decided to construct, actually to design a sear wall there. This is the location which was selected in, our, in order to balance the stiffness uh, in the opposite side of the building and reduce the torsion. Response spectrum analysis was used for the design of the intervention and detailed calculations are included in the document. This is the details of the reinforcement or a schematic representation of the reinforcement and the sear wall. Here you can find more details about the actual design, the cross section, the jagged columns, the, and the new shear wall. We, uh, you can see that we have also included the information about the confinement effect uh, due to the external reinforcement and the reinforcement of the jacket. And there are also additional details about the interface and the reinforcement of the wall and the jacket. Detailed calculations have been made for bending, for local ductility, shear capacity, and additional checks for the compression resistance of the diagonal strut for the interface connection between the plane and the frame, as well as verification of the connection of the interface between the old and the new concrete. 
all these are included in in the main chapter in the document and this brings me to the end of my presentation i would like to thank you very much for your attention and i would also like to acknowledge the contribution significant contribution the valuable uh, comments of the reviewers that you see uh, in this slide uh, Costani Halioris, Hugo Corres Peretti, Ricardo Marin, and Kipros Pilakutas were the main viewers of this chapter. So thank you for your attention, and I believe there is some time for questions. Thank you very much, Andres. Uh, there are, in fact, <clears throat> a few questions. There were two regarding the if the webinar is available. I have already answered. Uh, in the Q&A uh, window. There are now three questions uh, for you regarding the, your presentation. So I will read the first. Uh, the question is about if we should have an epoxy bonding agent between old and new concrete surfaces. Um, yeah, this, this, this could help the epoxy bonding too. Uh, however, the main, uh, the main techniques which are recommended in, in the code is the roughening, the dowels and the anchors. And uh, this, uh, this, uh, this should provide sufficient connection between the old and the new concrete. So the, the code recommendations is for specific uh, roughening and cleaning and the addition of mechanical connectors as towers and tankers for, for, for the connection between the old and the new concrete. Yeah, I think that will also be addressed in concrete overlays method by Robert Nambo, uh, Randall and also in uh, concrete checking that I will address and uh, the, the best approach is to increase roughness. There is another question. Uh, thank you very much. There is another question by Simone Tomai um, asking, is there a recommended construction sequence to install all those short and long dowels to minimize the weaken the existing structure? Yes. Um, yeah, I, I'm, uh, regarding the construction sequence, uh, I'm not sure. Uh, what should be included here? The main thing is that we need to practically to drill the holes in the initial in the initial frames, insert the anchors, put the epoxy resin, and uh, clearly we should be careful to do not damage the reinforcement of the existing elements and these. Uh, could be done by we should also use probably any non-destructive techniques to detect the reinforcement which exists there but as a construction sequence uh, i understand that uh, the, the the construction process here should be quite straightforward drilling the holes insert the adhesive and the, the, the dowels, unless if I, I don't understand something in the question. Yes. Well, um, you have also the, the Q&A button. You can uh, write yes. an answer. And perhaps yes. I would ask you to check the, the questions. And if you want to answer also by writing the answer, um, I thank you for that. There is a third and last question for, by Venkat Egad uh, asking uh, or saying, I did not see as to how interface shear arising out of the moment is accounted for in your calculations. Arising out of the moment. Um, for, for, the, for the calculation of the moment, uh, we do not actually consider uh, the calculation of the moment is, I believe, uh, here the question is, give me one second. Uh, for the calculation of the, I'm not sure which is the moment uh, that the here is referring to, because 
uh, for the moment, we do not consider the presence of the interface here. Uh, how the interface here arousing out of the moment is accounted for in your calculations. Uh, I'm not sure about this question. Actually, the, the shear force is calculated using the processes that the shear force is calculated using this equation. Uh, uh, here. Uh, now, for the moment, they do not consider uh, the, the effect of the presence of the interface here. So the, the moment is for plane cross-section analysis or for the overturning, which is not considering the effect of the interface. But this is used then in order to calculate the shear. Uh, I believe this answered the question. Yes, well, uh, we uh, cannot uh, give the attendees the opportunity to ask live. Yeah. So perhaps I, I would ask uh, the attendees, if they are not happy with the answer, to sure. better elaborate by written, by writing, and then the speakers will try to uh, answer the, that. Question. Yes, sure. As I said, though, the moments here are calculated using this process without considering the interface, then this is used in order to, to calculate the shear forces. Okay, thank you very much. Andreas, thank you. Once again.